So to this point, I've kind of given you a lot of games that you may have expected. But I'm going to throw you a bit of a curveball here with this game. Two months into 2023, and we already have some pretty incredible RPGs that have already launched. But the gaming season has really just kind of started for this genre, and we've got some very strong, long, long-awaited games. Life was dismantled piece by piece. And when I tried to buy it back, it cost me everything. Very long-awaited games. Unthinkable destruction. A witness senseless slaughter. Brother against brother. Pure hatred. That are potentially coming out in the next few months, and at least one of them will not be on a mobile phone. Perhaps the most anticipated game this year, despite being limited to a single console, the sequel to Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is coming out on May 12th. One of the big changes pointed out by news outlets and trailers is that the game will expand into the skies. Link appears to be powered by a glowing arm, which can apparently make cars. But beyond that, it looks to have a bit of a dark, creepier theme that I'm sure many fans of the original Breath of the Wild will truly enjoy. One thing I noticed that has me particularly intrigued was this kind of corruption that seems to be happening to Link that immediately brought me back to one of the best Studio Ghibli movies I've ever seen. Princess Mononoke. And if it's anything like that, I am super excited to jump into this game as soon as I actually finish Zelda Breath of the Wild. I've started the game. I have started. I got a Switch really just to play that game. It's fun. Blizzard Activision could use some good news. Dragonflight has done well, but its sales are still behind that of its previous expansion at this point. We can't say for sure just how far behind, but Q4 2022 financial results said that they're behind the level of its prior expansion, Shadowlands, which sold 3.7 million copies on launch day. This breaks from two consecutive record-breaking sales days for Blizzard with their flagship MMO. Enter Diablo, and no, not the one that pissed everybody off. Diablo 4 will be launching on June 6th, and while it will reportedly have some monetization that some of us won't be super excited about, it's looking like it will be much more reined in compared to its most recent iteration, Diablo Immortal. Diablo 4 will be shipping with five classes, but the Necromancer by far has my eye, with the ability to use the Book of the Dead feature to customize your minions and evolve them into different specialized skeletons. Speaking of customization, there's full-on character customization systems in Diablo 4, beyond just different gear. You'll be able to change your facial features, making the character really yours. Early reports on gameplay for Diablo 4 have been positive from the late 2022 demo build. As PC Gamer put it, Diablo 4 reminds me why other action RPGs don't do it for me. It either takes too long to earn enough abilities to formulate a plan, or they drop so many on you that it's overwhelming. Blizzard knows exactly how to quickly fill your spellbook and when to introduce a new wrinkle to get you thinking. One interesting change is that Diablo 4 will be forgoing the long heralded or long bemoaned inventory Tetris that has been prevalent in so many iterations of the game and even ARPGs all over for decades. And this is to avoid interrupting gameplay with that sort of inventory management. Speaking of items, those are getting some pretty big changes as well. Blizzard doesn't want you just to ignore items based on the color of their name anymore. New unique items will replace mythics, and the potential for affixes on rare or better items has increased. Honestly, there is so much more to cover with this game, and I think it deserves a video of itself, so look forward to that coming soon. A closed beta for anyone whose pre-order will be on March 17th to the 19th, and an open beta for Diablo 4 will be held the weekend of March 24th to 26th, so you don't have to wait long to give the game a try. Baldur's Gate 3 may be the game on this list I spend the most time on this year, because with just one act completed, I've already dumped well over 40 hours into this game as an early access title. I even did a video on this channel covering how underrated this game may be. If you like story in your RPG, turn-based tactical combat, humor, and romancing vampires, this is going to be the game for you. The gameplay is fantastic, but to me the most engaging part of BG3 has to be the story with characters that feel real and stories aching to be told. Baldur's Gate 3 is launching on August 31st this year, and with it comes a game utilizing some of the best parts of Dungeons & Dragons 5e system with some unique takes from Larian, the studio that brought us games like Divinity Original Sin 2. BG3 recently announced their Collector's Edition, which comes with some really cool statue that honestly, if I had the money for it, I'd probably go ahead and grab it. With the Collector's Edition, there's a head start, but 
We've kind of had a head start for a few years with early access, even if it wasn't the complete game. So maybe don't use that as a deciding factor. It's an RPG. If you're interested in Baldur's Gate 3, I've linked Dorkalina's channel down below. She runs a podcast on the various companions in BG3 and other parts of the game called The Hive Mind. The podcast is made up of three fantastic people who all have vested interest in Baldur's Gate 3 and D&D at large. It's made up of one D&D noob, a D&D enthusiast, and a D&D veteran. But to this point, I've kind of given you a lot of games that you may have expected. But I'm going to throw you a bit of a curveball here with this game. A Gothic 1 remake. We're starting to see some rubber to pavement with Embracer Group's acquisitions, and that brings us to the Gothic 1 remake by THQ Nordic. I blame Code Carnage for my interest in this game as I never actually played the original, but I watched Code play the demo, which was essentially a teaser to gauge interest in the remake all the way back in 2019. Now the remake's demo looked a bit rough, but with a few years to incubate and iterate, I'm interested to see what comes of it. Especially combat. A new studio began working on this game in 2021, Alchemia Interactive. Remakes are tricky, but there's been some great ones recently that have received rave reviews from both staying true to the source while also improving on things needing improving. One of the big changes from the playable teaser, which was heavily criticized, as mentioned before, is its combat. It'll now be closer to the original game. Of the games on this list, this may be one of the games most likely not to hit 2023 and perhaps instead will slide to 2024, but if you're a fan of the original or just looking for a darker fantasy RPG, keep this game on your radar. Now this next game I wanted to put on here just because it looks cool and interesting. Flintlock The Siege of Dawn Originally set to release in 2022, Flintlock The Siege of Dawn comes from developer A44. The developer's previous release, Ashen, received pretty great reviews from gaming outlets but currently holds mixed reviews on Steam. Ashen released in 2019. The trailer for Flintlock has me intrigued though, and it's not just because of the Mystical Fox Companion. Okay, it's mostly because of the Mystical Fox Companion. The combination of melee, short range combat, and magic opens up a lot of possibilities for engaging and interesting gameplay. The broad overview of the game's story is that you are Nor Vanek, part of the Coalition army and you're working to defeat an army of undead now that the door to the afterlife has been opened. It's an interesting setup and I hope they do some interesting things with it. More good news about this game, it's going to be a day one game pass release, easing entry into the game for people who are curious. And you'll soon start to feel like this RPG list is almost like advertising for Xbox Game Pass, but I promise I'm not sponsored. Our next game is a bit more Souls-like than the others. What happens when Pinocchio grows up? That's kind of what we've got coming to us in this upcoming Bloodborne-inspired action RPG from NeoWiz. I personally came late to the Soulsborn RPG genre, dipping my toes in with Neo and enjoying it for the challenge, but going all in on Elden Ring for a fantastic open world, the RPG elements, and yes, the challenge. Liza P is looking very similar to the games that came before it, but besides the setting and the Souls-like combat, there are some interesting mechanics and storytelling devices at play here, like the ability to modify your mechanized body with weapon making system that allows you to craft different tools to suit whatever situation the game calls for. Outlets have compared this favorably to Sekiro's mechanics. Devs have confirmed that there are 30 basic weapon types with over 100 possible combinations, which honestly just sounds like a lot of fun and probably something that I would mess up a lot. But that's not all. It wouldn't be Pinocchio if lying wasn't part of it, right? Well, the Steam page says you will experience interconnected procedural quests that play out depending on how you lie. These changes will then affect how the story ends. Lying gets you humanity points, and if that's not poetic, I don't know what is. No news yet if we will be getting a teleporting Jiminy Cricket companion like the awesome fox from Flintlock, but here's hoping. And our last game, Starfield. Starfield still looks to be on track for this year with reports stating the game is currently playable from beginning to end. They're aiming for the first half of 2023, so if they hit that, it could be any time between now and June, but I wouldn't be surprised if it slipped into the second half of the year, perhaps even closer to the holidays. I am sure that this game is something that they really want to get right and get the launch right as well. Starfield is the first new IP developed by Bethesda in 25 years and the scope sounds absolutely massive, like almost cartoonishly massive to where when I first heard it, I thought it was a joke. 
it will have over a thousand planets. Now granted, not all these planets are going to be the same in size or scope or, you know, the amount of content on each one, but that's still a massive, massive universe. Starfield looks to boast a very robust customization system as well, but not just your character. Also your weapons, spacecrafts, and even your own outposts. There's not much more I can say about this game that most of you don't already know. It has a ton of promise, it looks incredible, but will it be ready? This is perhaps the game I am most skeptical of, mostly just because of what it's offering. It's offering so much. There's a lot more great games that are coming out this year, a lot more great RPGs. Let us know down in the comments below which ones that you are really excited about. What ones that were not on this or ones on this list? What games did I miss that you are just waiting for? Or are you like me and perhaps holding out hope that maybe, just maybe, we'll get something along the lines of a Dragon Age 4? But long ago, he had a different name. Ven Harrell. Or perhaps you're just really excited about Final Fantasy. Speaking of Dragon Age 4 though, I did a little theory crafting to kind of see what the, the cadence and release schedule may be for these big games. Dragon Age 4, Fable, Elder Scrolls 6, and yes, Starfield. I put that in this video right here, so if you want to check it out and tell me how wrong my predictions are, here's your chance. My name is Redbeard Flynn, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.